Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this edition of For the Continuum Conversations. Uh, as you can see, I have a special guest with me today. Uh, my name is Colin Jason Knight from Matthew Cohen Glass. I'm your host. You may call me Jason. Would you please share your full correct name? Yeah, it's full colon Stefan, hyphen Michael, hyphen Charles, full colon Harris. You may call me Stefan. All right, Stefan. So we've known each other for a little while now. Actually, I think a pretty long while. We're pretty familiar with each other. And folks, one thing you may notice about who I have as guests on this show, they're all people that I have trust counts with. I trust them. They're good people. And they're all conversant in correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, which if you had any doubts about this grammar, this may erase some of them for you. So, Stefan, where I'd like to begin is just, uh, you know, give us a little bit about yourself. Tell us a little bit about who you are and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, well, mainly I, I spent 17 years of my life in the military, uh, 10 years of the Royal Marine, uh, and then best part of seven years in the uh, adjutants and generals corps in a little division called the Military Provost Guard Service. And then within that trade, I was a physical training instructor. Um so, yeah, uh, I've, I've got um, a few children. It's taken me all over the world, and I've got a few children there. And, uh, yeah, yeah, that's uh, about it. Pretty uneventful apart from that. So, in other words, not only are you conversing in the grammar, but you have actual, literal military service under your belt. That's what actually helped me understand this. Uh, like I said, I spent 10 years in the Royal Marines, and of course that's being part of the Royal Navy, and it's that Admiralty. So there's th certain things that I understood that I got straight away, which maybe other people it didn't. For instance, people refer to uh, courts as pirate vessels docked in dry land. Well, that's not the only venue. Um, commando units such as 40 Commando, 42 Commando, 45 Commando, uh, HMS Rally, uh, CTCRM, all based in landlocked countries, but they're considered as being vessels. So when you're uh, on board on, say, 4-2 Commando, um, everything's got admiralty meaning. We wouldn't say a cafe. We would say the galley. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't say we're going to the toilet. We're saying we're going to the heads. And then we're going out on the vino for the evening. We'll say, you're coming ashore. So very much like a uh, a courthouse is considered a pirate vessel on dry land. It's not the only venue. So it's little things like that I was able to get straight away. Legalese, another one. If you look up legalese, it will say it's a technical language. But if it's a technical language, if it's something other than straight English, then it ain't English. Simple as that. Uh, you know, English is English, and a specialised technical language is a specialised technical language. It might sound like English, but it isn't. Um, to give case point to that again my own life experience in the Royal Marines and the Royal Navy we speak our own language Czech speak it sounds like English if we was uh, if you was to be uh, listening to a conversation with a bunch of Royal Marines and all of a sudden we were talking about the head we'd all walk away uh, with one interpretation of the conversation but you might walk away with another of course we'll be talking about the toilet but you might be thinking about your head might be a poor example but it's those little things that help me tweak straight away that um there's definitely something in this. Yeah, it's, it's all it's amazing how all this maritime terminology makes it into our everyday lives. Even, you know, regular civilians, when you walk around, you can see like when you say, are you on board with this? You know, it's just a simple maritime expression. Yeah. Are you on board? Uh, and another one as well. Again, like, I mean, you, you say uh, um, sensation does not appear in Black's Law's Dictionary anywhere. And again, it's my life experience. Uh, the Royal Marines' motto is per mare per teram. Where, where else do you see mer? Mermaid, merchant. Uh, and per mare per teram is by sea, by land. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's all these little things. And, and, and yeah, it all, all roots back to Latin. And then once you sort of have that sensation, have that life sensation, that life experience, uh, it sort of helps it slot into place. One thing that I find kind of humorous is the over here in the past tense United States, one of the sayings is you're, you have the right to the pursuit of life, liberty, and happiness. 
well, to, to the, the maybe the average lay person, they think, oh, that that's freedom. No, it's not. Liberty is not freedom. Liberty is permission to leave the vessel. <laughs> I had mine taken off me quite a few times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. I can, I, I can vouch for that. Definitely isn't freedom. It's liberty. <laughs> so, okay, in that context, in your life experience uh, in the military up to this point, where was it? Where? When do you think it was that you first heard about correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar? Like, when did that happen? So, uh, I don't know, are we allowed to say the C word uh, of a particular medical event in 2019 or whatever? Yeah, I or? think I think it's fine. Okay, so uh, obviously I'm not going to be speaking too favourably of it, though. I won't be um, batting their narrative. I'll, I'll just say a particular 2019 medical event and just be on the safe side. So, when that happened, so, okay, you know my background. One of the things that we do is MBC training, nerve biological chemical training. And the uh, British government, in all its wonderful wisdom, says that if we're ever in these environments, there's certain PPE that we must wear. That's an S10 respirator. It's a canister. It's a suit made of charcoal. It's inner gloves. It's outer gloves. It's inner boots. It's outer boots. It's full of earth to decontaminate yourself. Um, and then to drink, just take a drink of water. You had to find shelter away from the, the, the infected area. You had to find shelter. You had to de, uh, decontaminate your pouch before you even open it. You had to then open up your pouch, decontaminate your water bottle, decontaminate the top of your water bottle where you're going to be drinking from, decontaminate your respirator, take your straw off, decontaminate your straw. Then you put it in, then you start taking drinks, and then... You know, a lot of this you have to do. I mean, I'm, I'm, of course, I'm a little bit rusty with it now, but you've all got you've got to do this within seconds. So, when you want to feed in these environments, it really does uh, give you an headache. You know, it's, it's a lot of effort. So, when you're turning around and then saying to people, "Oh, you can come into a restaurant, sit down, and you can take your mask off," it don't work like that. Okay, so you've got these legal people telling you one thing saying, oh, yeah, you can come in, you can sit down, then you can remove your margin. Viruses don't work like that. Biological agents, NBC, it, it just doesn't work that way at all. Um, and, again, these are the people that say, no, I have to wear all this PPE stuff, okay, during whatever climate it might be. But then since 2000, or oh, sorry, in the 90s, when I was in basic training, has it, I don't know, mask material has advanced so rapidly in technology that we now don't need all this clobber that we can just add this mask because the way these things get into you is ingestion inhalation and absorption what's what's protecting your eyes your eyes yeah Absolutely. exactly it's that's what i thought right off the bat yeah. so these people that went and they paid however much it cost to train us i couldn't tell you one thing but then they turn the people the other you know, don't take my word for it. I've got a generation of Royal Marines behind me and currently serving to vouch for that. You know, this is all stuff you can look yourself. It's not just through magic. It's not conspiracy theory. It, it just doesn't add up. So then all of these uh, scenarios and events that happened perhaps caused you to question the logic of certain things, and that's what led you to correct yeah. sentence structure? Of course, yeah. I mean, I knew it was... All a load of nonsense, and I had to find a way out of it. And I didn't lock down. I didn't get vaccinated. Certainly didn't do my kids or anything. Um, and I, I didn't social distance. When I went to the shop, I went to the shop. I let every other numpty play, you know, silly buggers. And I just picked up my, uh, my shopping and I, carried, and I cracked on. Um, and I'm fine. So I know not of this deadly virus you speak of. It, it, it's, you know, it, it's not it's not just me, but it, it's my children as well. Nothing wrong with them. And, of course, their immune systems isn't fully developed. They're only young, young children. Not fully developed. They're all right. They're absolutely all right. So, yeah, I, I knew it was rubbish. I wasn't going to play along with it. I knew something was afoot. I had an idea what was going on. Um because they're isolating us. And as we can see over here with these 15 minute cities, which is then going to lead into C40 cities. That's the real eye opener. 
then when you realize you've been uh, cut off from the rest of your family and your loved ones, uh, yeah, there's something more. I'm, I think, well, my interpretation, I'll just say again to the side of caution, is uh, there's something very sinister going on, and I think we all know why at this point. Um, but I didn't know the law because uh, I've been indoctrinated to the point where, you know, I'll go through school. I've gone X amount of years in the military. I'm used to being doing as I, as what I'm told, okay? Um, so I didn't know the law. I got told, right, that's the law. This is this, this is that, da, da, da. In the Marines, we come under uh, uh, civil law. We come under military army law, but we also come under Royal Navy law as well. So we got hit with all three, all three sticks on that one. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas, whereas the army, of course, they don't come under Admiralty law. Um, but I just thought that was normal because, you know, that, that's, you know, I, I didn't think that we was uh, what I would perceive to be the bad guys. Um, so yeah, that, 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 you know, I had to find a way out of it. So I started reading legislation, as I think we all do. And then you go down the man on the land. Da, 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 da. But I mean, if you got four thousand. The thing I kept saying is, like, how can there be so much legislation in this country? Let's say there's 4,000 legislation, superior statutes and all that sort of stuff. Okay, let's whittle that down to the three superior statutes, Act of Settlement, 1700, Bill of Rights, 1688, the Coronation Road, 1688, 89, da, 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 da. Union Act, 1702, 7, whichever. Um, just on them four points alone, it's just too much to remember. So, I mean, if I go to someone who, who's experienced, who, whose profession is in this field, and I say, you know, they expect me to know all this. Ignorance is no excuse in the eyes of the law. Well, I'll tell you what, there's 4,000 bits of legislation. Start naming. Start naming them, and I'll write them down. Because if you don't know them, how God's been enough for my mental health? So there had to be another way. So then I start looking, and of course, you know, you search into these things, the... The, the, the YouTube will pick up on certain things or the search engine, whatever. it pick up on certain things you're looking at and um, it starts throwing suggestions your way. And then I saw David with Miller, I saw correct sentence structure, uh, the quantum grammar and, and, and all the rest of it. And I thought, okay, well, let's have a look at this. And I got quite excited about it. The very first thing I watched was his nine-hour seminar, um, which was rather unfortunate. I mean, that nearly put me off. I mean, I got quite excited by it. But when he starts banging on about aliens and the FBI and this, that, and the other, it's, uh, you know, what, what planets this geezer on? And the fact he says that he's a Freemason as well, he's got, well, my trust for you, my old mate, has gone the <laughs> winter there. It's, um, but yeah, you know, luckily I, I, I stuck with it. And, but I'm, I'm the sort of person I question everything. I'll I take what you're saying, but I'm going to question you. And, Eventually, when I found you, and, and I did go down a multitude of people I was following. Uh, I mean, I've only been on this venture with um, correct sentence, correct sentence structure, communication passes, syntax, grammar, uh, a little over 18 months now. And um, yours was the only one that backed up what you were saying. You, you, you provided the continuum of the evidence, you showed it, you, you know, it's not my words, it's their words. And here it is. Here's the proof of it. Um, so yeah, that, that's in the end. I just started filtering others out. I mean, don't get me wrong, I do watch the occasional um Russell J. Gould because every now and then he will drop a little gold nugget in with relation to Admiralty. Certainly, nothing towards correct sentence structure I would follow him for. Um, but every now and then, when it comes to um salvage, there might be a little gold nugget of information he'll mention, and you know, then you, then you go off and, and, and research that. But yeah, I certainly don't take anything the geezer says. Uh, at face value, especially as he sits there with too many times in that sort of position, that straight away that get me back up. And well, I will say this about Russell. Um, I can say and suggest to the viewers out there who may be new to this or you know excited about finding it, any Russell J. Gould, any video that Russell is in prior to 2016 is thumbs up from me because he's talking postal mechanics. He's talking banking mechanics. He's talking flag mechanics, how to navigate in and out of foreign vessels. He talks about all that stuff. But it's after 2016 into 2017 when something changed. And he and David Wynn Miller parted ways. And he went off and started doing something else. And so I don't really put any value into the stuff that he did after that. But prior to 2016, 
all the videos that I've seen, like maybe four or five really good ones, he's he's really dropping some some good knowledge out there. Yeah, I mean, and, and there's, there's like other stuff as well. I mean, like I watched one a while ago now. He's shouting at the camera. He, he's like, absolutely yeah. off his rag. He's like, hey, who are you shouting at? There's no one there. <laughs> You're getting angry with yourself. <laughs> In pro wrestling, they would call that cutting a promo. Yeah. It's, 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 can you imagine just all of a sudden you sat there and some guys just start shouting? It's insanity. It's too, too much theatrics. And then at that point, you think, yeah, maybe your gold nugget I'll, I'll listen out for. Hopefully, you'll mention something that helps me put another piece of the puzzle together. But other than that, nah, not at all. So, so we can follow this story. So during the lockdowns, that's when you started watching more videos and things like that. And that's where that's you came on to David Wynn Miller, Russell J. Gould. Uh, of course, there's other individuals out there. Mark Lowercase K. That's how I came to it in 2017 because he was the only one offering anything that had to do with, with quantum grammar, with the name quantum grammar in the title on the Internet. That got yeah, me I mean, interested in it. I mean, I emailed him myself, but then it weren't so long. He was asking, "Oh, just just give us a donation." I might have been born at night, but it weren't last night. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just uh, everything's like, yeah, yeah, just give a donation, give a donation. And um, well, these days it's like three three hundred sixty four US dollars just to have a conversation with them. Yeah, I don't think he's that interesting either. <laughs> <laughs> wherever he is <laughs> exactly yes <laughs> all right so that's when you start okay so then then you you contacted me because you were interested yeah. in doing workshops yeah and i don't know what what's your recollection of that like how the first meeting went like what was your impression well i came off the back there was um i shan't mention his name uh another guy who at one point was quite popular in the, in the quantum quantum grammar community. And um, I had one or two lessons with him. And uh, so I was fresh off his method. But again, there were certain things it was left with regards to syntax in. He was saying, oh, yeah, but it's up to your interpretation. It's all poetry. What they write is poetry. And it kind of makes sense. I, I kind of get that. But I think that's very wishy-washy, that's not going to hold up. If, if I'm in court, and I've got some judge asking me, well, why did I bank these values and that value? You know, I can't say, oh, it's how I felt, it was my interpretation. And that's a very weak argument. That's very weak. So I needed something more than that. So off the back of that, and gone down his method of teaching, um, and I found you, the first session was, of course, mixed up in the two of them. I had to try and think logically uh, you know which course do I go down I mean as you said as well in your videos it's uh, prior to you and Raven I, I can't pronounce the geezer's whole name you have to forgive me um, you, you, you came up with uh, a method where everyone effectively can end up syntax in the same you gave closure as to why uh, David Wimmiller uh, and Thank you very much for bringing the technology to everyone and, and, and you know, as far as I know, uh, discovering it. Um, he gave uh, a four, one, one, three, four scenario, I think it was. And you said that you'd never seen a one, one and it wouldn't work because an adverb is a modifier. And because um, you gave that explanation, that closure, that, and, and it made sense. Um that's why I came down to you. That's why I, I cross decked over to your uh, methods and like to think to the best of my ability. That's what I apply when I'm doing what I'm doing. Well, the individual that you spoke of that you didn't name, of course, I know who you're talking about. What they said about it's open to interpretation. I mean, like you said, that's true. That's true. But here's the thing. When you walk into one of those foreign vessels in dry dock and you say that, guess who's going to win? They're going to win because it's their venue and they have the bigger guns and clubs. But if you have this knowledge as your authority behind you and you can certify what you say, say, no, 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 no. What I'm saying, it, it has weight behind it. Look, at, use an etymology dictionary. Everything is, is about language and grammar. Yeah. How you communicate is how you 
navigate your fate. I yeah. mean, they created a whole ass language, legalese, to deal with these important issues. So grammar is obviously very important. And that's the power of this stuff, because when you can certify what a tangible contract word is, what a non-tangible contract word is, what a position, lodial fact, blah, blah, blah. And you can explain those things to another human being under duress. That's a very powerful uh, thing to be able to do. Yeah, it is great. I mean, one of the most important things I think that you said as well is you've got to create your own dictionary. And um, again, black, uh, legalese, they've got their own Black Law Dictionary, Ballantine's Law Dictionary, and all the rest of them. Well, just like I say in the, the Marines and the Navy, we speak Jack speak. Guess what? Day one, week one, when you walk through them gates, you get a dictionary. So then the Royal Navy owns everything that you say. Things have different meanings. Um, you might refer to the sea as water or, uh, sorry, yeah, to the sea as water. We'll call it Oggin. Um, we'll, we'll, you know, you might say you're going downtown and you're going to go look for a, for a girl to pull for the evening. We'll go looking for a gronk. So we've got all these different terminologies. Like I say, it's called, you might call it a bed, I'll call it a pit. You know, children, we'll call it sprogs. So you've got all these meanings, um, and some of them may be a little bit more familiar to the English language. And even within the military, the Royal Navy and the Royal Marines have got their own language different from the Army. The Army was, let's say, uh, a knife, fork, and spoon. They'll call it their diggers, whereas in the Marines we call it our KFS. So even in the military, we've got our own different language for the same object. And I bet they get their own dictionary as well when they walk through. So, you know, it, it, yeah, grammar is everything. Your, your dictionary is going to be everything. And there's a reason why they've got their own dictionary. Because one, it ain't English. And two, it's that important. It's, it's, that, it's that important to them as it is to us to have your own dictionary, to have your words defined. Otherwise, you're just talking babble. That is so important what you just said right there. Because when you walk into those foreign vessels in dry dock, if you choose to do that, which I would never do unless I absolutely had to, I take everything, I carry everything through the postal court. But if you have to walk in there, you better have a dictionary. You better have that closure with you, if not physically, but here. Because if you don't, then they're just going to use theirs. Yeah, exactly. Exactly that. That's like the first thing that I ask everyone, you know, a lot of times that I speak to about this. Do you have a dictionary? Because if you don't take stewardship of your words, someone else is going to use them to control you. Yeah, exactly that. I, I was helping with a guy out today. I can't remember exactly what it was about. Uh, but it's to do with bailiffs. And um, I said, well, when he comes up to you, he, he ain't the author of the document. He's not creating, he's carrying out on behalf of someone else. Now, so he's got no authority straight off the bat. Now, if he's going to start saying, um, right, here's me authority, da da da, say to him, Simba, what does that word believe? Um, for instance, believe, what does that word mean? What does this word mean? What is that? If he can't give you closure as to what them words mean, he's lost all perceived authority because they, they, they've got none anyway. Any perceived authority over you. Because by default, if you've got your own dictionary, if I had a bailiff come to me and says, well, you don't know what that means, let me grab my dictionary and I can qualify it. Guess what? By default, we're using my jurisdiction. And I've now got authority over that, and that's not perceived. That's genuine. Because the document's only as powerful as the words upon it. And if you can't give definition, I'm not wrong word, <laughs> if you can't give a finite meaning for those words, it means nothing. And in a general sense, I'll, I'll just outline this real quick here, that that's how, that's the mechanics of how correct sentence structure works in a foreign vessel in dry dock. If you walk in there with your document, contract, postal vessel, court venue, with the flag mechanics, postal mechanics, banking mechanics, grammar mechanics, you have that with you. You've posted your roads, i.e. you've given notice that you're going to be there at such and such, you know, juncture in the now space. And you walk in there into that well of the court, you void all the boxes and planes. Your document with your dictionary takes jurisdiction over that well of the court. Why? Because the one by 1.9 flag is the flag of the land during the time of the contract. It is literally the flag of the well of the court. That's why it works. I mean, I don't even know any of that stuff about posting roads. I know of it, but I don't know the mechanics of it. Uh, 
I'd be like saying I, I definitely intend to learn. But I mean, I, I've, I've had first hand evidence with um, uh, the Metropolitan Police. I wrote letters to them. I, a, a pal of mine was involved with them, and of course, my pals are scaffolders. They don't know any of this sort of stuff. Nine months he had a case going on for. This was over Christmas last year. I says to him, I says, Jack, do you want me to take a look at it, mate? He goes, yeah, go on then. So I was as a look at it. I wrote one letter using his email, and uh, six to, six days flashed to bang. Everything got, got dropped. An NFA, no further action. Everything was dropped, and all his equipment returned to him. That went on for nine months, and that was using correct sensor. And and I don't pretend to know the ins and outs of it, like you know, like like yourself. I'm just a geezer that likes kicking all its nest and seeing what comes out. It's as simple as that. But what I have done has worked. That's one case. I've got another pal, Patrick. And uh, exactly the same kind of scenario, though this went on for five years before I got involved. Sent a couple of letters, incorrect sent the structure. I says, here you go, Pat, use this, mate, use the other. And uh, it took a little while longer, but all of a sudden he phones me up one day and he's like, they're having a, a, a barrister's meeting. I says, well, get yourself in there. He says, I asked. I says, I can't go in. I says, well, insist in going in there. They're talking about you. Get yourself in there. Now, he was with four pals. That's wrong. Three pals. And um, they, none of them were allowed into this barrister's meeting anyway. 24 hours later, after this document I sent in, everything got dropped. Everything got dropped. I know I syntax to the best of my ability, not saying I'm sure I'll probably find faults in it now, but perhaps I weren't too far off the mark because, you know, very shortly after I got involved, they dropped everything. And that comes to the most important thing behind any document contract, postal vessel court venue, or anything you do. It's volition. It's the most important thing. If you have correct volition and your grammar is not 100% correct, I predict that you'll have a beneficial outcome. If your grammar is 100% correct, but you have, excuse my language, shit volition, it's probably going to backfire. That's just the way it works for some reason. Um People will, will contact me and they'll say, Jason, can you syntax this for me? I have a court case. I'm not realizing that it's not going to do them any good if I give them something I syntax because they don't know what's on the paper. But what I do tell them is anybody can parse a document. Anybody can go in and say, oh, well, this BE means no, like be head, no head. Simple little things like that. You can go through a document and do that. You don't need to know how to syntax to do that. And I know people that that's worked for, and they don't know correct sentence structure. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, David with Miller said it one time. It's um, if you've got something on them, if if you're correct in what you're doing, then your grammar's there's no reason to be using fraudulent grammar. Um, that's exactly right. It, it, it's if you are right in what you're saying, then you've got no reason to be blagging your document. Yeah, if you have malicious intent, that's a different story. If okay. you're looking to screw somebody over or to take advantage or to tip the geometric level playing field of contract, then that that's gonna that correct sentence structure is not gonna work for you. I can guarantee you that. Beyond a shadow of a doubt. So one thing that I learned from David Wynn Miller in that when you're dealing with these types of things, these types of scenarios. You have to think, how much of a bloody nose are you willing to get? I know that you said a while ago that you like to kick the hornet's nest. So while that may not be the safest way to go about things, it has that, that spirit of, well, what's the worst thing that can happen? If I can accept that, I'm fine with it. I'm following through 100%. Because if you can't think of the worst thing that can if you can think of the worst thing that's going to happen, and you're not okay with it, you're not going to go in 100%. You're not going to go full blast. And then it might not have the the, the outcome that you want. Yeah, that's true. But, I mean, like I say, I have more of an insight than most people in this community, I would say, um, because of my background. I, I've done uh, specific operations where I have been – patrolling streets in a police role, if you will. Um, so I know that they have uh, 
uh, rules of engagement, uh, rule powers of arrest, and, and whatever else to, to some extent. Um, I, I have that experience and know what they can do and knows what's going to happen once they get you in. And I know what their questions are going to be to an extent um, and how they're going to treat you. And I also know full well that they're the ones in the wrong. <laughs> they're the ones in the wrong. As long as we ain't hurting anyone. I mean, I can tell you, I mean, I've been on tours where I've had things thrown at me. And you know what? We've done absolutely nothing about it apart from run away. And exactly the same is going to happen to them. There's enough, they're the ones in the wrong. You were talking about all that uh, stuff that you tried to, that you started studying, all the laws and codes and statutes and things like that. I don't know how it is over there, but over here, when you get legislation introduced into, you know, the government, it's like a stack this thick yeah. of papers for one bill. Yeah. There is no way one human being can read that. So the governors and the senators and whoever will hire people to read it for them and then summarize it. So they're not even dealing with something that they read firsthand. They're dealing with something they were told. Exactly. And it's and all it broken yeah. continuance of evidence. And it's someone else's dictionary. It's Mr. Black Law's dictionary. It's Mr. Ballantyne's dictionary. So they've got authority over their words. But all it's going to take is that. And then you get their document and you go, well, that's an adverb, verb scenario. And then you've got an a adjective, adjective, pronoun scenario. And then you just disqualify it all. No matter how thick it is. And you say, you know, and I think a lot of the time, once you know you show competence and you're able to do it, you can disqualify literally anything. You know, I won't literally have a private conversation with you about what else I've done. Um, I don't think they want to get you into court because imagine saying that in front of 12 other people and now 12 other people have this knowledge. Well, that's the thing about correct sentence structure also that although what some people may think that it's it's too complicated, it's not. It right. is not complicated and that is the power of it. It, it all the, What it takes is a different mindset. You have Your mindset has to update itself We've been to this before. new type of thinking because once you have this, you can invite other people in. It literally levels the contract plane. It's a geometric level playing field. There's no modification in it. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, we've just been taught all these fancy words, <laughs> um, but they've been modified and they've been modified with particles and negation. So when we think we're all trendy and sticking a prefix in or, 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 or a suffix ing on the end of it to try and sound like we've got a really good vocabulary. We're actually saying the opposite of what the word meant in the first place, like wake and awake. <laughs> you know, poor example, maybe, but you can see what I'm saying. But by elongating these words, we've just given it a negative meaning. Review, the simple, like the review. Mm. Why do you say review? Why would yeah. you just say view? Yeah. Research. <laughs> Since we're talking about grammar again, I have to ask you, because uh, I like to get this on every one of these shows. Just you, you, you can hold it. You don't have to hold anything back. What do you think of me as a tutor? Because you've taken a couple classes with me, like the way that I teach and the style and all that. What do you, what, what, what could you say to the people about that? I don't even say anything. My actions, I keep coming back. I was there on your seminar in August. I started off uh, training with you. I went away for a little while to get my head around it. Uh, and I had to watch your shows um, back to back to back to back to back. Once I got a little bit of knowledge, then I went into your uh, seminar back in August and uh, let it settle in a bit more. And then I've been coming back since. So, yeah, I mean, I, I do like the uh, uh, the unfiltered approach if something's not good you say it's not good uh you know I, i'm not here to as someone hold me in and look after me and, and be like oh they're there it'd be all right no i want someone to tell me if it ain't right why it ain't right and um what i need to do to improve you know um yeah and that's why i keep coming back <laughs> so, well thank you for that words <laughs> 
speaking of that seminar, I have been trying to put together another one uh, regarding Parse, but it's such a pain in the ass to do to get everything together like that. Cause I'm a one man show, man. I, no one else does this, but me, I mean, I don't have a team or anything like that. Well, I must so, admit when I was on that um, seminar, I was looking at all the people that you had in your room and I was thinking for two best part of three hours work, in fact, what you've done there uh, on the seminar alone. Um, I thought that's not a bad return. He's on a good little number. Eh? <laughs> yeah. Believing. If I could do that every month, if I could put something together like that every month, I'd, I'd be cooking, but then, you know, then there's a lot of other things in life that happen that have nothing to do with this that I have to take care of. So it's a, it's a it's a balance. I do believe people are coming. I do believe it'll be turn out to be worth your while. I've been trying to, to find different platforms to do that other than like like some sort of maybe website or something where people could actually send a donation that way that I don't have to personally respond to each email. If there's something like that, but I'm not real tech savvy. So that's just something I'd have to look into myself. But in any case, to go back to you, since you're the guest here, we were talking about 15 minute cities and things like that. Let's tie that into what maybe some of your plans are for using correct sentence structure in the future. Like, do you have any projects yeah. or anything to, that you're looking at? So, I live um, in South London, and I've got a son in Essex, and I have a daughter up north. And um, I'm, <laughs> they're both well out the 15 minute area. And so, and I've also got a grandson up north. So, if they think for one minute any C40 or 15 minute city in any way, shape, or form is going to stop me. Uh, going up to see them. No. They're, they're, they're well wrong. Um, but it'd just be nice to learn the postal roads, you know, keep it sweet. I'll, I'll play the game, all right? But, um, yeah, I, I just need to know how, how with as, as little fuss as possible, to get up to see my kids. And then when I, once I've done that, I can pass the knowledge to them. I can pass the knowledge to others. And uh, hopefully then everyone will see it's, it's just a load of old pony. It's, they ain't got no jurisdiction. They got, they got no for it. They got no power whatsoever. I haven't looked too far into it, but I have to think just using logic, dedu logical deduction that uh, these 15 minute cities tie into the electric cars that they're pushing on people. And things mm -hmm. like that. It had they're using the environmentalism as an excuse for this to re reduce quote unquote carbon emissions. That that's what I'm thinking. It, it's about. It's sort of using the same logic as someone goes into a courtroom and they're trying to use correct sentence structure or common law or whatever, but they don't know what they're talking about. Now the courtroom can say, "Well, they're talking crazy." So they're a threat to themselves and others. So now they have an excuse to lock you up. Well, it's the same thing with these these 15 minute cities and and all these regulations being put on these car manu manufacturers to get rid of gas engines and bring in the the Teslas or whatever it is, the electric cars, because you're hurting the environment. Uh, I, I I've got a few friends that are on the close protection uh, circuit. And uh, I had a phone call of one. When did they do the COP20 up in Scotland? I can't remember if that was last year or the year before. Anyway, they really started rolling out these uh, electronic cars. I get a phone call from one of my pals. And I'm talking, he's right up there with Justin Trudeau, Boris Johnson and all that lot, okay? He's up there in the figure it. He phones me up and he knows what I'm like anyway. I've been telling him about all this stuff. And he goes, you never guess what? I went, what's that? He goes, they got these... Uh, electronic cars up here. I went, oh, yeah, of course they have. He goes, guess how they're charging? I went, how's that? He's got a diesel generator. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but, but even so, I mean, you've only got to do a Google search. Type in the electro bus company. We had all this stuff in 1902, so why are we pretending it's new? If we had all this stuff in 1902 or, or whenever, thereabouts, why are we pretending it's new? But, exactly. 
it's, it's something I wanted to show you. Um, so you got the city of London, all right? And I'll sometimes go around there. I'll take photos of things that stand out to me, just in case at some point I have to use it as evidence. So the city of London jurisdiction is literally within that square mile of the city of London. But for whatever reason, we think it, it goes beyond that. So this is, you will see 13 dragons. And I guess we can reference what that's all to do with. You will see okay. 13 dragons post at certain parts. And underneath those 13 dragons is that. Now you can see the sort of casing, but what's missing? If we're using uppercase lettering in our fact. Okay. It needs to be out of a hyphen. Well, it's lacking all punctuation. Lacking all punctuation. So, yeah. So, we'll look at a city. So, what's that? A uh, 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 412 scenario then. <laughs> Correct. Like, if you were to write an incorrect sentence structure, it would be for the city of the London. Yeah. And then for the London hyphen bridge. So, grammatically, I know Romney Stewart has also mentioned that in his videos as well, when he uses the uh, the fiction's own um, Chicago Styles Manual 17th edition. He's referenced that himself. But there's evidence that it is there. Right? I've just photographed it. I can go through a whole load of them. I've just took photos of all 13 of them. They're all void of any hyphen. So then, not only is it grammatically wrong in the fiction, but it's also grammatically wrong by a correct sentence structure standard. Well, let's talk a little bit about, since we're talking about history and Romley Stewart and things like that, I know that in one of, in the nine-hour video you mentioned about Colin David Ivan Colin Miller, he makes the statement, to paraphrase, I punctuate my name. Benjamin Franklin punctuated his name. George Washington punctuated his name. I found no evidence of this. I saw... Um, As in evidence of a full colon in front of the first name, I've never seen that. I've seen hyphens, but I've never seen a full colon used in a name. About three days ago, Russell J. Gould done a... Uh... Uh, an interview and he said that he looked at it and it was in his banking ledgers if I remember correctly he's got access as a postmaster of the globe or whatever that he can go looking through all this stuff and uh, do you show a screenshot well uh, it's on the video if you go on his uh, YouTube page you will see it on this most recent thing that he posted on there uh, but he was saying uh, that he had access because he's the postmaster of, of whatever you like. Mm -hmm. um, they could had access to all, all, all the uh, uh, bankers' diaries and all that, and it was all in there. Well, like, that's the thing. We're, 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 trust me, bro. We need we need screenshots of these ledgers. Then at least the name to show us that oh, this individual did. But this is true. What they're saying that back in the 1700s, people were punctuating their names with full colons. I've never seen that. Now, I've seen Latin written in block letters, and then they'll put like a dot or a diamond in between certain words. I've seen that. But I've never seen correct sentence structure used before David Wynn Miller brought it out. What um, I have seen, if you look at land deeds from like the 1800s and 1700s, if you can see like a real estate transactions and even court documents, you will see them use prepositional phrases. They'll say, on this day of the June 14th, with the transact, like it, it's sort of written like that, but it's not correct. I've seen it in, in some of the superior statutes as well. It's sort of the Sesquivay 1666 um, kind of reads like it. Um, not, not quite, but it kind of. But my, my closure on it is, is this. Um, before I do... Before anyone gets into the meat and potatoes of my diary, I've got what is grammar, what is syntax, all right? And I use the Google searches. I use Oxford's definition. I use Webster's definition. So this ain't my words. This is their words, okay? This is their closer, their definition, and I use the etymology of it, and it all says about the same thing. It says what syntax, for example, the way in which words are arranged to form sentences, what's a prepositional phrase. And use – so – if a sentence is structured without a preposition, if syntax 
is non-existent, then it's, it's reading nothing. It's not saying anything at all. So you haven't got a fact. You've got something based on a fact, a fact-based term. So if you don't put the colon for the, you haven't got, you haven't set up the sentence correctly. You've not got the preposition there for it to read a factual statement. So then you've only got something based on a fact. Well, something based on a fact is not fact. You know, I can do a drawing based on a can of deodorant. It's not the deodorant. It's, it's based right. on it's a drawing based on the deodorant. So for me, that's my closure in my head. How I can make sense of how people that do not punctuate their name, they're a, a pronoun. So during my time in the military, well, my time, it was my adjective, adjective, adjective pronoun time in the military. And I was just there for the ride, I guess, <laughs> in, in, in body. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it, That's the same thing that um, in 2000, in the fall of 2017, when Colin Russell, Harry J. Colin Gould did that military court martial of David Wynn Miller. I don't know if you remember that. No, I don't think I've seen that one. There's a couple of them I ain't seen. Uh, there's, there's some ones that quite a lot of people saying that they should watch and quite a few that you reference. I can't find them. Well, it's uh, I'll send it to you if, if, uh, if I can still find it. I don't know if it's still. I saw the original video of it, though, before they edited it. It, it got sent to me. By Russell J. Gould, as a matter of fact, in 2017. Um, so it's just Russell outside sitting at a table with a mason's hammer, you know, a judge's gavel. Oh, yes. Sitting, yes. And then behind him is a very heavy set individual with an automatic rifle standing That's behind him. For what reason, I don't know. <laughs> Effect, I guess. But he says that they're, he's doing a military court martial of Colin David Ivan Colin Miller, military. Because Colin David Ivan when Colin Miller was in the military. No, he wasn't. Adjective, adjective, pronoun David when Miller was in the military all those years ago when David was 18 years old. Correct sentence structure didn't exist back then, or at least not in the public. And he did not punctuate his name. So there, And on top of that, Russell, to my knowledge, has never been in the military. So... I, yeah, I mean, we, we, we come across these individuals that, you know, are saying they've, <laughs> they they control all these uh, branches of the military. Well, how have you done that? You haven't even stepped foot. <laughs> you haven't stepped through the main gates of the base of, of Catrick or Aldershot or, or, or CTCRM or Rally. How, no, no one's going to recognise you. And if you try saying it, you're just going to get laughed at. You're just going to get laughed at. No one's going to pay any attention to you. Even. I guess we could start naming. We could name two names. Russell yeah. J. Gould has claimed that made military claims. He claims to be a muster master. He claims to be postmaster general. He claims to be commander in chief. Marcus Sean Christopher also claims to uh, have jurisdiction over military, although I'm not sure the particular title that he uses. But neither of those individuals were in the military. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, would, would you then say they're, uh, what's the American term, uh, uh, stolen valor? Is that not an offense? Yeah, it is. It's you put in jail, you put in a brig for impersonating a police officer or military personnel. I mean, has he ever ponied up his ID card and evidence? Maybe his, his pass out photographs? <laughs> <laughs> These are just all common things that you would expect to have. It's like, oh, was 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 your pope? We had <laughs> so his claim. Russell's claim, as far as having jurisdiction over the military and commander in chief, is because of knowledge. Because he claims to know the mechanics of how to move yeah. military theaters and things like that. So, so does he know things what like anti ambush drills and things like that? If you're talking military knowledge, then as in military knowledge on on on, on structured troop attacks, section attacks. Company tax. How's your knowledge with that? I've heard him say in videos, I've literally heard him say that, you know, with, with what's going on overseas in the Middle East, pick your pick whatever war you want or invasion so you want. His fault? Did he send them over? Did he? Is that his fault then? Well, he's saying <laughs> to the generals, please contact me because I can solve this problem for you. Well, whilst he's asking him, he can just step in, can't he? If he's, if he's, uh, 
the sovereign and whatever. You would think that. Yeah. I'm trying think. to find out if I'm trying to um, find out if Joe Biden was in the military right now. Well, it is son or something. And he got the wrong one. He would have. He would have time of day. Is. I watched him today. Bearing in mind, you know, these people are dying in in, in Israel and, and Palestine and that. And uh, I saw him conduct this meeting with the BBC in an ice cream parlor. I think it's an intelligence test. How stupid is the world's population? Because what, what, why, why are, you, are you talking about Gaza? Why should chopping in on ice cream? But it wasn't just Joe Biden chopping on ice cream. It was his chief security. You want to be close protection? I saw that. In your job, and, and and you're chomping on an ice cream. I think it's an intelligence test. I don't think the fictional commander in chief, which me just saying that in relation to Joe Biden just makes me laugh. Okay, but I don't think he was ever in the military. I think his son was it was it Bo Biden? He Bo, was in the reserves. Or I think he was in the Navy or something, but yeah. I think Biden himself was turned down because he had asthma or something. That's what the 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 media says anyway. So here we have a sitting, as they say, president who's never been in the military, who now supposedly has command of the military when he doesn't even know left from right and the guy falls up a flight of stairs. If I grab it, that is impressive. I'll give him that. <laughs> I mean, just think if you took all the world leaders of the fiction and to solve the problems that you locked them in a boxing ring and had them do a, a no-holds-barred fight. Who who would who would who would win? I don't we, think any of them. I don't think they can even tie their own shoelaces up. And I, I'm not use and I use that literally. I use that literally. I do not think these people are even human. <laughs> I'm not talking lizard or anything like that. Just they're just creatures. They're just um, um, incapable. They're not capable men, is what I mean. Um, they're just absolute oxygen thieves. They, they, they they've never done a day's work in their life. And I tell you now. When I used to work around uh, Eton, and uh, the amount of children there, okay, these are all the future leaders of the world and that, right? Alleged leaders, right? Parasites, more like. The amount of them that would walk around with no, with, with, with their shoes untied. It, it's quite a coincidence that they're all walking around with their shoes untied. I don't think they can even do their own shoes up. My father-in-law, he works over in... Um, I better not say actually, but uh, a, a very established university. And the amount of times now, these people are so academic, right? They're, they're, their minds are through the stratosphere, all right? The amount of time they lock themselves in their own classrooms and the door ain't even locked. He literally spends most of his time going upstairs, open, just twisting the door handle and letting them out because they repeatedly get stuck in the classroom. I think these people are just that incapable. They wouldn't know how to fight. They wouldn't know how to fight. I would say there's one well, exception. Section. One exception would be Vladimir Putin. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. I've seen footage of him. He he does uh, what the Russian equivalent of like judo and wrestling is sambo. It's a very specialized martial art. He's he's very good at that actually. So I think yeah. he would have a chance. Well, it's, uh, okay. Maybe it's just the British ones then. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, mean you, got absolute oxygen thieves. I mean, they're laughable. Your king oh, is the epit man. your king is the epitome of physical fitness, isn't he? he you know, he's not. He's not that useful. He, he's I don't know, sausage fingers. Yeah, no. <laughs> his I, face I, is always red. His face is always beat red. I know, but it's. I mean, these people are just sickening to me. These people are just absolute sickening to me. The lot of them. And then everyone's like, oh, yeah, they should skip Charles and, and put William in charge. You know who his uncle is, don't you? And his great uncle. <laughs> you know, it's in their family. It's in their blood. Yeah, I mean, speaking of blood, I mean, who, who was the sovereign before that? Queen Elizabeth. I don't think it's any coincidence that the word Liz is in her name. Yeah. Liz. I mean, with, with regards to sovereign, it depends how far you go. I want to go talking down that avenue? I mean, I'll just say there's a document FTO 30 forward slash 1048, and within the first page, and certainly within the first 20 pages, 
you can see as a, there ain't no sovereign. As of 1973, when we walked into the EEC with Ted Eath. <laughs> yeah, that's no one to look up. Um, yeah, we ain't had no sovereign. And it was sovereignty was given away. They became head of state at that point. And not say like FCO 30 forward slash 1048 says exactly that. They become the head of state. Well, then, if you're going to give way to the fiction, and the one time I would give way to the fiction is when I used the maxim, um, inclusion of one thing is with the exclusion of others. But you can't be an head of state and a sovereign. Mm -mm. You can't be a citizen and be a sovereign. Exactly. Exactly. So that's why, you know, the way it was put to me uh, by someone that, you know, there is no such thing as a sovereign. Unless you apply it to spirituality, if, if that's your thing, you can be a spiritual sovereign. But as far as physically, materialistically on this earth, there is no such thing as a sovereign. No, not at all. There isn't. And it doesn't matter if you're religious or not, okay? The fact is they are. They are. And you can't get into the Freemasons, of which they're all members of, without having faith in some supreme being, no matter what that is. That is true. So, you know, even now, again, I've, I've lived in Windsor and I've worked around Windsor. I went into, there's a massive chapel right by Windsor Castle. And this is when my mind started uh, being curious and I started noticing patterns and symbols and da 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 da. And I just started getting into the correct center structure. So I walked in and I opened, uh, it, it is a massive, probably King James Bible. Possibly, could say for sure. But it's over on the page. So I have a look at it. Every time God was written, it was in uppercase and completely separate to the rest of the uh, text. So God was completely removed from the page every single time. Mm -hmm. Well, that's another topic we could get into on another time about symbol symbology, symbolism, and things like that. I know that um, Colin David I've been with Colin Miller piqued my curiosity when he started talking about being a key master hmm. yeah that there were 78 keys now if you want knowledge of keys you just have to grab a tarot deck the 78 keys are right there half positive half negative if you want to learn about that type of symbolism it's all in the vatican it's all in the chapels the cathedrals in france all over the place, yeah. India. And it's symbolism that's been with these ancient societies for so long. And it's secret, but it's not secret because it's out there. It's just that some people just don't know what it is. Yeah. And I've yeah, always taken the, uh, I've always taken the stance that if something is secret, classified, or kept from the public, that's a violation of rule one, rule equal. And I don't care about it anyways, because it doesn't matter to me. I want what's there for everybody to have if they want to participate with it. Because contract is by consent, right? Yeah, exactly. hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Stefan, do you have any final words? No, no. It's, uh, just keep doing what you're doing. I mean, I'm enjoying the videos and uh, yeah, thank you for having me. Anything you'd like to say to any newcomers? that may be watching this, watching you, and maybe taking inspiration from your stories? Anything to say to the newbies? Uh, the quickest way to get around uh, a correct sentence structure is to go through the playlist. Go through how to create a correct sentence structure, go through the syntax playlist, go through the passe playlist, and, um, yeah, so just the short lessons and all that. Start there, because, yeah, there's a lot of, Videos on there, you've got what's it, the best part of 900 videos. And you look at them and you think, well, where do I begin? Go through the playlist. Go through it logically. Go through the sentence structure, how to put one of them together, how to put how to syntax a document. Go through all of that playlist, taking notes, of course, and then the past saying of a document. Just start there and uh, the penny will drop eventually. All right. Well, it was an honor to have you here, my friend. And maybe oh, we'll have you too. on again if you're interested. Certainly, 100%. Anyway, thanks very much, and have a pleasant evening. You too. Thank you. Peace. So long. If you would like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, I offer several choices. The first one, and the easiest one, 
is to study the almost 900 free public videos on this YouTube channel that you're watching right now. The second option, if you want to see new content, is to click the join button on my main YouTube page or under any video that you're watching. Click the join button and you will see two tiers of membership. If you choose the second tier, the loyalist contributor tier, and you join that for a monthly support donation, you'll get new content, fresh content, exclusive content not available to the public every month. But keep in mind, there's already almost 900 videos here free to the public to study. And the third option is to contact me at the email address at the bottom of your screen. And this is for the serious students only. And apply for a correct grammar workshop. But please include your correct name when contacting me. And I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation. And you and I will have a conversation. You can ask me whatever you want. I'll answer your questions. I'll do the same with you. I'll ask you questions. And we'll see if indeed you are really serious or not. Thank you.